Good morning once again, congregation. Uh, you now we always come in reflectively straight into the entrance hymn. You can say hi to the neighbor seated next to you just in case you didn't. Amen. And so this month we continue to journey on together with the word of God and focusing on stewardship. The month, as Elia alluded to last week by the dean, that the month of October and November, we shall be focusing on stewardship, reflecting on what God has entrusted to us and how we respond with the gifts, callings, and the blessings that God has entrusted to us. And so this morning, we will dwell on what I've entitled Maximizing Opportunities. Maximizing Opportunities driven particularly from the book of Genesis that we just read, that God gives us opportunities in different seasons and we are to maximize those opportunities in the God-given seasons of our lives. Realizing that some opportunities don't give us a second chance and whether it's a season of hurt to us, we are to learn from there. It's a season of celebratory. We are also to learn from there. Let us pray. And so, Father, we remain grateful for your grace that continues to cover us. The gift of life and all the blessings you continue, Lord, to grant unto us as individuals, as families, as indeed as a church. And now gathered together to fellowship, we ask that the Holy Spirit continues to be with us, to guide us in our worship, in hymns, in word, and in sacrament. And may your word, O oh Lord, encourage us this morning. May your word correct us this morning. May we be rebuked by your word. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation, God will always allow us to go through different seasons of our lives for a reason. And during the Christmas season, it's a common phrase that we hear that it is a reason for the season, realizing that there's always a reason for the season that all of us are in or are going through. Seasons of our lives are different, as stated, of course, in the first Bible reading we read, that there will always be seed time and harvest, day and night, cold and heat, winter and summer, stating that seasons will never be constant but they'll keep on changing. With this, we get also to realize, therefore, that God never changes. So whatever season that we could be going through, whether seed time or harvest time, whether day or night, but yet God is ever constant in our lives. And so even as we focus on harvest, it is my prayer that beyond the harvest of financial resource, we shall also dwell much more on the many avenues of harvest that God calls each one of us. God is calling each one of us to harvest in every area of our lives. He's demanding a harvest from every area of our lives. Could be social harvest on how we are to harness and harvest relationships, for example, and how we are to harvest and harness opportunities from the season that God has given us. God has created all of us to grow. It's something that God has given, it's a grace God has given to all of us, that we are all to grow. But yet, while age comes, the growth of age comes naturally, but yet the growth of being is by intention. God calls us to grow. As much as we can grow 
by years, numbers will increase, years will increase, but yet to grow in our prayer lives, to grow in our spiritual lives, to grow in our social lives or any other area of our lives, we are to put in effort. Our, my Bemba friends will say, Tafisa ngami no mkanwa. Age will come like ame no mkanwa. But what you use the teeth for must surely have, it requires some work to it. Genesis chapter 8 that we read this morning spells out categorically these aspects of different seasons of our lives. As much as God has created all of us to multiply on this earth, I like one thing, that when God has created all of us to multiply, it's literally a command that God gave us as human beings. Be fruitful and multiply. That we are to see that growth and increase in our lives. Not just the growth and, uh, of quantity alone, but the growth of quality as well. As we maximize opportunities in the seasons that God gives us, I'll dwell on four principles from the scriptures of today. In our Bible studies, we can add, we can make them 10. Genesis chapter 8 teaches us principle number one, building an altar. For us to maximize opportunities in any season, we must build an altar. Noah came forth and built an altar. And when he built that altar, the Bible says, in verse 20 of chapter 8, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took every clean animal, and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offering on that altar. Now, verse 21 is interesting. And, the, and when the Lord smelt the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground of earth. Now, we see a situation where Noah has built his altar and is offering sacrifice. Sacrifice, he's offering prayers there. And the Lord is pleased. Children of God, we are all encouraged to build that altar in our lives. An altar isn't just the lovely structure table behind me with elements on it. It's beyond that. An altar is a place of divine encounter with the Lord. What is brought on the altar can be wine bought from different sources, like there was a call last week of getting, diff, uh, of getting some wine. It can be gotten from different sources. And anyone, of course, can bring it anyhow. But once it gets to that table, it's not given back to you in the same way. It can be, it, when bringing it here, it may have come in boxes of shop right, etc. But when it is being given back to each one of us from that altar, from that communion table, it's never given to us in plastics anyhow. There's reverence. What do we learn from this? That as we bring and as we place our prayers before the Lord and as we put all on the altar, it is given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and in good measure. Children of God, when the disciples came before Jesus, says there are so many people and they are hungry. Jesus says, feed them. Says there's nowhere to buy food. There's nowhere to buy food. And even if we bought, how much should we even buy? Something interesting happens to show to us to say an altar isn't just a structured table there. He says, bring forth. What do you have? He says, we can see some two fish and five loaves of bread. Bring it. And God, Jesus Christ, then raises an altar just there and then. He prays. And after he prays and blesses and thanks God for that fish and bread. 
what happened? Everyone was fed and everyone actually had extra. And the Bible says that they were leftovers. Church, on a lighter note, I saw a picture on social media. And so this picture was depicting expenditures and salaries, of course. And so the bills had gigantic beings, like two people and of bills, rent, school fees, and all of them were quite gigantic. But yet, the salary was still a toddler. And so the other bills were pointing at the salary to say you must grow as well. But yet for you and I, that growth comes when we bring ourselves, our offerings, our thanksgiving, our almsgiving before the altar. When it is given to us, it actually grows more than those bills. Malachi comes to us and tells us to say, try this and test me. It's an open check that is unto each one of us. It is my prayer that as we continue to grow in our faithfulness of our financial giving, our social giving, and every other giving back, like we always pray like faithful Anglicans every time we come to the table of gathering like this. Send us out into, we offer ourselves. We always offer ourselves to where? To the altar, to be used by God and to grow, that whatever is coming in our possession, whatever is coming in our entrustment then must be able to see that growth because we are laying everything on the altar, we are laying our lives on the altar, and therefore we must be able to see growth in our lives and in everything that we go through. Child of God, whatever you give to the Lord is given back to you. That's actually the goodness. It's given back. But yet, the promise of God is that it will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and in good measure. I don't want us to see this only in the context of resource, financial resource and blessings, but in every other aspect, church. That, that gift that you have, that calling that you have, as you bring it forth, the Lord will give you back, pressed down, shaken together. I'm still praying for my gift of singing, that it's given back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and in good measure. When two people agree, the Lord opens the heavens. Amen, Father Joseph. Secondly, from the psalmist, we learn the second principle, divine sowing. Divine sowing. Again, we are being reminded to put our focus on the altar. And in the psalmist, we realize that when we put our focus on the altar, when we, put, we, we lay our lives on the altar, our being on the altar, there we see restoration. There we see joy. There we see blessings. If you check in the bulletin on the psalm that we chanted together this morning, there, the promises that are there is that as we lay on the altar, there's restoration there. Which area of your life do you need restoration laid before the altar of God? Which area of your life do you need joy laid on the altar? Which blessings do you demand? Lay it on the altar. It is my prayer, congregation, that we will begin to put our mindset together that as we see the opportunities that God gives us, we will actually sow divinely in this divine season that we are in. Number three is depending on God. For us... To maximize the opportunities that God gives us, we must depend on God. The second reading that we read this morning 
teaches us that. That God is a supplier of every seed. That lovely gift that you have, you just, done, you just didn't have it. God himself gave it unto you. That calling that is upon your life, it is God that called you. That seed that, go, that you have, it is God that gave you. And so therefore, for us, we are to depend on God for growth, for enrichment, for overflow, for evangelism, and actually for being prayerful. We are to literally depend on God. Church, as long as it can be our season, but if we don't depend on it, we may lose it. Church, there are so many opportunities that come our way, but yet for a Christian and a believer, it's not every opportunity that we jump up with two hands. Because there are always questions we ask, God, is this for me? Secondly, is this my time? It can be before you, but yet you and I need to descend from God that this is the right opportunity to grab on. And this is the right time to do it because it's possible to grab the right opportunity at a wrong time. And literally to grab a wrong opportunity on a wrong time altogether. But as you depend on God, you will descend the voice of God. To say this opportunity is for you and it's the right time. And he will create the path for us. Because some opportunities, just because it's our time and it's our opportunity, it's not always that to, to come wrapped or in Father Christmas model, that this is a good thing. Some opportunities actually come packaged in challenges. And so depending on God and descending the voice of God, we will then help us to unravel that opportunity amidst the challenges. Some opportunities, congregation, will come wrapped in challenges. Don't disguise every challenge that comes your way. Some growths, for us to grow to a certain level, there's a level of growth that only comes in challenges. So not every, challenges, not every challenge must be casted and binded. There are challenges we must pray, thanking God for them. It's very easy to cast away every challenge, huh? but sometimes it's wise of us to thank God the fact that we are able to see it grow in and within us. The fourth and last is wisdom. For us to maximize our, our opportunities in our season that God gives us, we need wisdom. The gospel spells this quite well for us, that it gives examples that others were able to cast their seeds on the, the soils, others on good soil, others on the road. But yet, children of God, as much as it can be seed time, we must always know where to plant, when to plant, and how to plant. It can be the right time to sow that seed. It can be at the right time, but yet we need wisdom to know where, how, and when. Just like we are all being called, of course, to build relation, but it's within us to descend and to have the wisdom of God, to descend how close we are to be with which people and which people we need mostly in a particular given season of our lives. At some point, there's a way that God brings different people in our lives. And sometimes they'll come at different seasons. Sometimes we don't always have to complain that other people left at us a certain time. Some people may have only been there for that particular season of your life. And so it is for us to appreciate God for that season that they were in our lives and for what we learned. Likewise, it's for us as well, in wisdom and discernment, to know which people we need in what particular area of life. 
This reminds me of the story in the book of 2 Kings chapter 3 about Solomon when two women came before him. So apparently, the previous night, these two women were sharing a room and the scripture puts it that only these two were in that room. And they both had children. Details in the scripture that they were three days apart. So one of the women sleeps on the baby and the baby dies. And so she wakes up, gets her child who has died, places it on the neighbor and gets the one who is alive and sleeps then with her. So in the morning, the other lady wakes up and see, trying to feed the child and the child is dead. Looks at the child and notices this is not my child. And sees the other child that is alive on the other end. This is my child. And now they are arguing back and forth. And so they come forth to the king to lodge in that complaint. Now before the king, the king hears their arguments back and forth, back and forth. And the king says, well, since you are all saying this is your child. And sends the servant to bring a sword so that the child can be cut in half and everyone goes away with their part. And at that moment, the owner of the child says, don't do anything to him. Let her get him. And the other one who was claiming the child says, yes, cut her in half. And the king there says, there is no way. If this is your child, you don't want him to be cut in half. I want us to go back to that scripture and read anywhere there between the lines where the king went into the closet to go and pray at that particular moment. The king was prayerful quite all right, but at that moment, he used wisdom. He used wisdom. As Christians and as a body of Christ, we are being called to pray but we're also being called to use and apply wisdom when it should. We will not pray our way out of certain issues and challenges. We will not simply get a shortcut using prayer. It will not work like that. There are principles that are required in our building of relationships, in our building of resources, in our building and growing of ourselves. And wisdom is one of them. That the one who prays before God for wisdom and seeks God for that divine wisdom, and one who is just simply praying all their way out and never touching anything, never doing anything, I'm yet to find the success of such a one. I'm yet to find success of such a one. Congregation, we need to exercise wisdom, apply wisdom in the process of evaluating and executing our decisions as we make this life the best of it. And as we together focus on the different opportunities that God has given each one of us. God has given all of us a gift and God has called all of us to something. And that's why we need each other. Because we've got different callings and different giftings and different abilities. And we go through different seasons of life. That what you are going through, your experience of life is actually a lesson to another. Not only to you, but to another. Sometimes, if we could interact with others, maybe we wouldn't make some mistakes we would make because we would have learned from the others. Likewise, we would achieve as we learn the principles as well from one another within the body of Christ. In this month and the months to come, as we continue to focus on harnessing uh, resources within our lives and as we continue to focus 
on gathering together of resources of people and ourselves together. It is my prayer that we'll continue to descend the voice of God. We shall build that altar. We shall depend on God and we shall look up to God. And in all this, we shall not use prayer as a shortcut or as, as an excuse, but we shall pray. And as I uh, hear one of the words now that has actually been used uh, to encourage prayer, the word push, push until something happens. But even as we push until something, um, pray, sorry, the word push, P for pray, uh, U until S something, then uh, H happens, put until something happens, is that we really have to push. We really have to push, but yet we really have to depend on God and get that wisdom from God. God is calling us to grow as individuals. God is calling us to grow as families. And God is calling us to grow as a church. It's what God has commanded you and I to grow, to multiply, and to be faithful. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.